Hello and welcome to Petro Media. I'm your host, Terrence Anderson, and today we're going to cover the rebuild of the MPC 5000. Now, I got in some MPC stuff parts, nothing too crazy. Essentially, when I got the 5000, this was the second one I picked up. The first one came in and had some issues with the jog wheel. I think I posted it in the shorts uh, a little while ago, uh, like a, a replay of when I bought it back about September. And the dog jog wheel wasn't working right, and the hard drive wasn't working right, and I had to go through a whole process of getting that hard drive going again. After that, the power supply basically went poof uh, because I didn't know the fan was bad on it. Uh, this is why it's important to do maintenance on machines like these because they're older and eventually things tend to go wrong. So when I ordered the second one, it was in better condition. Pretty much everything was working. It was cosmetically in good condition. As we found in the last video, it was dirty as hell on the inside. I did a lot of maintenance over the last several days just to like get it up to speed and ready. Now, before I take it down from its little perch to have it up here on to start putting it back together, I wanted to go over what's going on with this machine. So, so far, the hardest part of this was taking the case off of it. And it's kind of my fault because, again, I didn't fully look at it before I started taking it apart. But I'm glad that I got it all sorted out. This took a little bit of gooby gone and some scrubbing. I'm not too worried about the edges, but the center was a little bubbly. Um, I think the person rushed putting it on to their new one because it had a new pad sensor on there apparently. So it was replaced when they put the fat pad in and you know, they didn't, I think they just didn't fully clean it off, but I took it all off. I, I sh basically sanded it down and got all of this stuff off with some gooby gone and sandpaper. So uh, it's very, very fine grit sandpaper so it doesn't damage the metal. But now that's done. Everything has been sorted out with all the buttons. I've gotten all the gunk off. Cleaning them was an interesting experience because what I decided to do was first I used laundry detergent, one part laundry detergent, three parts water, you know, in a bowl so that I can soak it. And I soaked it overnight to just get it into all of the bits. And then cleaned all the buttons off from there. Then I soaked it overnight another night in hydrogen peroxide just to try to brighten up the buttons just a little bit. Now, the one thing I did that was very, this is this is dangerous and I don't recommend it to anybody else. And if you decided to do something like this, you have to do it outside. When I took it out of the hydrogen peroxide, for the buttons, what I decided to do, which this creates an acid. So do not do this yourself if you do not know what you're doing. Now, I took them, out and I put them in the sun while they were still wet with a little bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide on it. And I dabbed a little bit of bleach on the little tops of each of these buttons. What happens is the hydrogen peroxide and the bleach becomes a type of acid and it starts to smoke. And I let it do this for about, I want to say two minutes, not too long before washing all of it off the buttons. And I did it all outside because that, that type of acid is extremely toxic to humans. So never do this at home, inside. I literally did it in my backyard, well ventilated, away from everybody, all the kids and everything. But the end results were these yellow buttons, they're not fully white, but they're a lot better looking than they were before. And I also didn't leave it on long enough to damage anything. Now I do have one area of concern, and that's this knob right here. This wasn't moving before I took this button off, but this knob did not want to come off no matter how hard I tried. And I finally got it off. And in the process, I think I might have loosened the, the uh, potentiometer. But so far, it seems like it's fine. I'm not that worried about it because I really don't turn the volume knob that much. I usually set the volume on it. And then I'm using the knob on the SSL 12 to actually control the volume of everything. So I'm not that worried about it as long as it just works. But some point in the future, I might consider replacing it if it's damaged, but I don't think it's damaged. And we'll find out once it's actually up and running. That's the quick recap on everything. I also picked up some deoxy grease that I have to go put inside of the faders just to make sure they're smooth. Cause right now after all the cleaning, these things don't really want to move. So I need to put a little in there in a moment. Let's get to the reassembly. So what I have in here is a set of the regular pads. Now, these are the Akai pads. These are not the MPC stuff pads. MPC stuff sells both types of pads, their own and the original Akai pads. 
and I opted to pick up the original pads for a couple of reasons. For starters, I actually prefer the feel of the original pads over the fat pads. The device had these pads on here and they weren't bad, they just felt really, really hard. And I kind of like the give that you get in the original pads. I've always liked the original pads on my NPCs. 2000 that I had had the original pads on it and I never changed them. The 1000 currently has the original pads on it and the first 5000 that I picked up had the original pads and I liked how they felt. This one was in better shape than the first one when I replaced it. So, you know, everything works better, but I just didn't feel, didn't like the pad feel. And the other thing I ordered from them, which I thought I picked the, the Akai version, but apparently maybe that's just not something that's in stock anymore. But I got the MPC stuff pad sheet. So this should resolve the pad problem. I was having a problem with one and two. It started with one and then it spread to two. And I'm assuming it would have spread to three and on and on down the list because these are in, I guess you could say parallel together. They're in a series parallel together. You can see the wiring on there. I don't know if you can really see it because of the glare and everything, but they kind of wired up in this series type pattern where the, the, the top node is probably the positive and they're all in and the negatives are separate. So they're in sets of four. And this one already went bad, which is probably gonna start causing issues with that one and that one and that one. So I'm glad I got this to replace the ones I had before. So let's get these on here and then let's start putting her back together in one. I like the fact that there's some guides that help line things up. For starters, you have the holes on both ends of the metal that line up with the pad sheet. And the interesting thing is when I took the pad sheet off the last time, um, I didn't notice as I was taking the old one off that there were these two little nodules at the top that help keep you from pushing the pad above the right to, to like the wrong place. I took my time starting from the top, swiping down section by section, just to ensure that there was no air under the pads. Because with these pads, if there's a gap for these comp contact pads, what happens is when you hit the pad, um, the pad won't trigger right. You know, you'll hit the pad and sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. Because as you're hitting the top, there's a pocket of air pushing back the other way on the bottom. So it's really important that you pick a corner and then push everything down, kind of like you're putting on, um, kind of like you're putting on tint on a car. It's the same deal. Like you start in a corner and you work your way out till you're all the way done with everything. If you don't do it that way, you're just going to screw it up and you're going to be pissed, have a bad day. This would get damaged. I don't know if I could get NPC stuff to replace it again uh, under warranty or something because I highly doubt they would actually do that just simply because, you know, you already damaged it after you put it on there. But maybe they will warranty it, who knows? But suffice to say, this is done. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this going real quick. And we should be good to go. That was probably the hardest part of this entire installation, getting this ribbon to sit inside of the connector and then tucking it in because the pad sits up, raises through the metal. The metal sits way down, almost right above the actual plate that the pads are on. So the ribbon can't be sticking in there. It has to be tucked underneath and below the buttons and also a little bit lower. I kind of wish with this one thing that this was underneath and on the back somehow, because that would have made a lot more sense. Uh, I think, I think in the 1000, that's how it is. I haven't been in there in a couple of months and I don't remember, but I think that's how it is in the 1000. It's like tucked underneath and in, not sticking out where you can see. The person who had this before me bent the chassis a little bit. I'm assuming when they opened it up, they made the same mistake I was making where I was like, why isn't this opening up? <laughs> not realizing the uh, screws were on the back of the screen that were holding it on. The back of this is a little warped. Not damaged bad, but you can tell that it damaged this enough that now I have to squeeze this together as I put the screw in just to like get it in, which is a little annoying. 
that if I don't squeeze it together, it's not gonna be lined up right, and then it won't go together correctly. And I think I'm putting the wrong screw in because there's a lot of different screws for the 5000. Like, I just wouldn't say a lot. Maybe like four or five different sets. Like four or five different sets so they don't all line up. Like, there we go, that's the right screw. So I gotta squeeze this together while I tighten it because if I don't, the buttons won't sit flush on the front. So let me just put this one in. And I suspect I'll have to do a little bit of the same on the other side. Let me just check it. Yeah, there we go, nice and flush. So then I need to do the same thing on the other side of this. Yeah, that'll do it. So now, now that's nice and smooth. And all these unnecessary screws that I took out, I would have basically was in the process of taking the back, the, the back plate off, not even realizing that's what I was doing. That is the wrong screw. Use a smaller one. I didn't realize I was doing that, but that's what I was doing. So let me put the back plate back on so that it's good to go. And the good thing about doing this repair now is that I won't have to do this for a while. The machine is pretty solid. The only thing left to do after we do this is to just run the OS update. And I didn't back up the hard drive. I'm debating it because the hard drive has some issues. And for, so, for the life of me, this entire time that I haven't had the machine set up, I never decided to check what I had on the hard drive. It's a one terabyte drive. Um, I think before I connect it back to the back, I'm gonna plug it up to the computer and just check the drive just to make sure I know what's on it and make some final decisions. Um, I can access the files to load them, but then I've been saving them to a compact flash. And I think, again, that goes back to the issue I was noticing with the USB. I wasn't able to format it on the, on the, I was able to format the drive on the machine, but I wasn't able to copy the data through the USB. And that was something that I noticed was a little bit of an issue with this 5000. But again, I don't know if it's just because the previous person, when they did everything, they didn't do it all 100% correctly. So we'll try checking some things and see if it works. Also, I don't know if I really want to do it that way because this is USB 1.1 and it's going to take forever um, to copy everything. So for me personally, having the ability to at least access what's on the drive, because I have a backup copy of it sitting on you know my, my server. So I'm not worried about finding the data. I have the data. I just like sometimes to have it directly in front of me. So at least I can access it and load it up on the machine and I can keep it moving. But anyway, let's finish putting this thing back together. You know, something I just thought about that might be the issue with the drive because it sees the drive and everything. And I have to go check the, I don't think it's in the, it might be in the manual. I have to check the manual again, but I can't remember if this drive needs to be the master or slave setting. Back in the day with old hard drives, you actually had to use a jumper to tell it which drive was the master drive, I mean the C drive, and which one was the slave drive, which is pretty much any other drive after that. C drive is the master drive. Um, that was a old technology thing with when you had IDE cables like this. But with, once we got into SATA, it was not really that necessary. So hard drives would still have the jumper slots, but they, were never, they would never have the jumper in it because it didn't need it. But this is an old thing. It's very possible that I'm supposed to put this as slave and it's currently set to master. But, you know, I'll worry about it a little bit later on. Right now, the bigger thing is just making sure the thing is running. Another thing that's annoying about this, as, I, as I'm pausing again, the previous person used the wrong screws. I don't have the correct screws. I'll probably have to get them. These do work, but they're the wrong screws. These are flat top screws. They kind of go on the face plate. And there's only really, there's only two of them on the face plate. There's three of these, four of these here, and I don't know why they're here. Um, I might see if I could swap them out with something on the back just because these shouldn't be here. But for now, not gonna worry about it. It is what it is. All right, so she's back together. 
All the panels are on on the sides. Everything is looking clean. I'm happy with this, honestly. I like the stock stuff, you know? I love this look, love these gray pads. Let me get my sweater out of here. Put her down, because it's not light. <laughs> Yeah, I, I prefer this. Feels better. So the only thing to do now is to plug it in and see how it feels. There's some spaces. I'm gonna have to go and that's another thing. He took off, he or she took off these little spacers that go underneath here. They go underneath the caps and they keep the fader from touching the, the actual thing. And if you, when I got it, I noticed some of this was a little faded. It's because the fader was rubbing and scraping it. So I'm, for now, gonna keep it like this. And I will see if they have this. Failing that, I have a 3D printer. I might actually just print my own little spacers. That's, that's the beautiful thing about having your 3D printer. It's actually behind the camera over here on the table. Um, that's the real purpose of a 3D printer. You just print these little parts that you just can't find anymore. And then you gotta have your fancy stand. This is the most important part of the entire build. If you don't have three pieces of wood taped together with some black tape to make a, a badass stand, you are, you are totally screwing up the entire experience. <laughs> Honestly, it, was just, it didn't make any sense to buy a whole stand for it just yet because I was still trying to figure out if this was gonna be the machine I really wanted. Um, and you know, in a couple months time, we are gonna be turning this all around. Right now, everything's kind of on the table. I recently got some stands to hold the speakers up. So now they're sideways. Some people are controversial about this. Honestly, there's no big deal with this when it comes to position, but it really doesn't affect the sound. If anything, in this position, it's a little bit easier to hear the highs from the tweeters because it's firing at the same level as the woofers. For, for me, this is better. Um, for years, I'd have it standing up straight. And I like it standing up straight as well, but I always hear more of the bass when it's in that position. So in this position, I'm hearing both um, almost equally. So it works out a little bit better. It's just one of those weird things, engineering quirks, but my little makeshift stand goes underneath the 5,000. And once everything's plugged up, I just push it back to the keyboard in the front. She fires up. Yeah, there we go. Freaked out for a second, but I forgot the contrast was adjusted by accident. All right, so now let's load something. the hard drive. Oh, we have a problem. Damn it. This is not moving. Shit. Okay. I have to take it all the way apart again. I will be back in a moment. Intermission over. Uh, I made a mistake with the jog wheel, which also now makes me wonder if that's the same mistake I made with the other one that I returned because the jog wheel on the first one didn't spin at all, it was very, it was just sticking. And I didn't know why until I opened this one. <laughs> and um, what I learned from this one is that the jog wheel has some notches underneath and the thing it sits in is a circle with notches as well. But the thing is the notches don't really line up when you look at it. It doesn't really say this is where it's supposed to go. So I have to actually sit there and fiddle with it and then check it with the case just to make sure it mounts. And now we're good to go. I took the two screws that were on the back of the case from here from the screen, because it's not gonna make a difference and use those to help mount the bottom prep a little bit better. So now the bottom is completely secure. Uh, eventually I'll get a pair of screws for there and I'll put them in. That shouldn't be a big deal. But we're ready to turn it back on and make sure everything's working. The moment of truth.
That's all I really wanted. I wanted to make sure the pads were working. So let me just check them all. I couldn't do that on the last set of pad sheets. This one triggered whatever it wanted to, and this one was starting to do the same thing. So now that I can... I'm happy. That's good. I'm happy. <laughs> this is working fine. I had to take it back apart, like I said, because the jog wheel was a mess. I screwed that all up, but now that's working. All the buttons look like they're okay. You gotta do the Christmas tree check. And then the thing we really have to check, is this button now working? Now he really messed this one up. Now luckily I don't use the start end buttons at all. I almost never use that because most of the production stuff I do, it's a loop. It's four bar, eight bar or 16 bar loops. And I'm not trying to go back and forth. If I have to search through something, I'm gonna go this way anyway, and nine times out of 10, I'm not even gonna really search through it. I'm just gonna hit, go back to the beginning. But the end button definitely needs to be replaced. Even though I got it to now click, it's not making any contact. And when we opened it up um, a couple of days back, we found that that button was just a mess. Um, like literally like he poured something on the machine over here, something by accident or whatever, which now explains some of these rust marks I'm seeing here. But now the overdub button works perfectly fine. The record button works, has always worked. Overdub's working fine, stop is okay, play, start, play, start works. Everything's working fine except that button, the end button. I don't need that button though. So I'm not gonna worry about it right now. For the most part, we're good to go. Yeah. Go back on mic. All right, so yeah, so everything is good. I am happy with this. Um, I think it's time to get back to work on some production. And if you look at it now, it's so clean in comparison to how it was before. Everything is looking good. All the buttons are working. Note repeat, all the buttons are working. So now I'm really, really happy with this. The synth which has got this painful. That's weird. Ah. One problem I now need to figure out, and I'm running out of time to do it tonight, so I'm gonna have to figure it out tomorrow. For some reason, pad 15 is acting funky. I will check on that and get back to you guys on that. I wanna make sure it works, so I need to take a look at it and see what's really going on. Okay, I had a quick chat with MPC stuff and we sorted out the issue with pads 15 and 16. Basically, I didn't notice it, even though I was very, very careful with the way I put the pad sheet down, there was still a tiny bit of air that was still on the pad 15. So for some reason, it was causing this triggering back and forth between 15 and 16. But now everything is working the way it's supposed to. And I go through the testing of the pads. If you look at the screen over here in the corner, it's staying on pad 16.
So we are good to go. All the other pads work like you're supposed to. So I can say with full confidence that this rebuild is done and I can get to work on this thing again. So now we can end this video. And I guess the only thing I have to say about it is that this was an interesting rebuild. It didn't take an insane amount of time to do this. It did take a couple of days only because I had hiccups and I had to wait for responses from the company that is providing the pad sheet just to see where the mistakes might be happening. And this was definitely user error on my part, so I'm glad I was able to resolve it. I reinstalled the OS during this time, so I didn't film that. And the OS reloaded some sounds that are preloaded, which I'm gonna see how I can remove that. Or maybe I won't, because it actually made it so I can get to the synth files easier. So that was actually kind of an interesting thing. The person before me, I really don't know what they did with it, but there was a lot of settings I just couldn't get to or get to work right. But with me reinstalling the 2.0 OS all over again, all these different things are now working fine. So I guess that's it for this. If you like what I've been talking about, like, share, and subscribe. Join me next time, and I'm going to get back to grinding on this thing. Also, I'm going to start working on some new packs for the website. Um, I'll start putting them up soon. I've just been so busy getting things back in order and preparing for certain other scenarios going on and, you know, some, with the, some stuff with the family. So time is coming now where I can really focus. So I'll catch you guys soon.